Swim bait rods. I'm gonna bring some baits in on the bass day and you guys are gonna think I'm joking. Okay. Swim bait's a big new deal. I love it. We'll show you the baits we're using. You're gonna think I'm nuts, but I'm not. I'm a pretty cool guy. Okay. Swim bait, once again, is one of those things that's technique specific. What does it take to throw a swim bait? Guys, they're big. About that big around, about that long. They're huge, okay? We gotta have a rod that can handle that. You try to pick up that rod or that rod and throw one of those baits that's three ounces, the rod's bent back to your ears, it goes by, you bird nesting, all kinds of bad things happening. The right tool for the job. So what did we do? We got all our numbers again, seven, nine. Seven, nine, those sun baits are big, Gives me a lot of leverage. <clears throat> Set the hook. The other thing it does, it's long, it's got two handles. I'm not very strong, I gotta work at uh, to get it out there. Okay? Because you're not gonna go, I'm gonna roll cast this three ounce or watch. The rod's gonna go, Whoa! you can't hang on to it. Okay? Tool for the job. Now we're up to heavy. We're up to heavy. Okay? Powers a lot more. See what's happening here? Look at that tip. There's no, hardly any bend going on at all up in here. See that? Power's increasing. For the swim bait though, I still have to have sensitivity because they just swim usually without a lip. They're just a jointed bait. Works with hydrodynamics. Okay, so you gotta crank them really slow. So you gotta feel it. So I know I gotta feel it. Okay, so I, I can go one to three ounce lure here. That's a huge lure, I'll show you guys. 15 to 25 pound test, okay? My action on this is fast, okay? Now you're saying, Seth, you're bringing that bait through the water. You told us not to have fast, right? You told us not to have fast because if they go to grab it, you're moving it, okay? If you saw how slow you're moving it, I can grab it and drop it and not get hooked because I got slow speed. Okay, see the difference? I'm moving it slow. Guys, I may be crankbait rod. We'll do the smallmouth thing tomorrow, I'll tell you about it. But I may be going as fast as I can. I'm not doing that with a swim bait, real slow. That's how we get away with the fast, okay? How many of you in here like to pitch and flip baits. Oh my God. Wow. Is everybody here just for steelhead? Is that what we're doing? Man, I'm getting concerned. Okay, guys. I picked up this rod and Chad started drooling. He is our resident bass pro. And he loves to do this, as do I, and as will you. Okay? It's a meat stick. We go out, we hunt deer with these things. We do all kinds of stuff with them. Okay? It's a big old heavy rod. You pick it up and go, what am I going to do with this? This is close combat, man. Close combat. We look at this guy here. We got seven foot six, 76. Okay? It's heavy and it's fast. Okay? Guys, when I'm flipping a bait, and I'm sure you've seen it on every bass show on TV, Mickey's where the bait's at. Or the bass is at. My boat may be here or closer. I pick the line up, drop it in the hole nice and easy. That reel on there, that's just on there for looks. So as soon as that thing drops in, and it's extra fast, it's fast, so I'm feeling everything, and as soon as I feel that ping, oh, and it's, it's cool when you set like that, and that five pounder slaps your buddy in the face, it's neat. He likes it. Ask my dad sometime. He loves it a lot. 12 to 25 pound test. I'm in tight. I've got a long rod. It allows me to, when I feel it, because i got good sensitivity, to just all I'm doing is setting the hook. There ain't a whole lot of reeling going on. You see those guys on TV doing it all the time. That's the tool for the job. Typically what happens, springtime, you can get on top and pretty close. Get a little later in the year, 
and say, you know, late summer, you start moving back up. A lot of times, I'm in the boat and they're a little bit gun shy. They've had stuff thrown at them all summer. Water's clear. They're not 100% wanting to do anything. Now I gotta go, okay, Randy and Chad are my targets. I can't simply just pick the line up and dunk it in. I gotta come in, whew, underhand, fire it in there, because there's a big overhanging brush. I gotta get it underneath the brush and drop it in subtle. I cannot do that with that rod. If I go to whip one in there real fast, remember how I talked to you about spring loading the rod and bird nesting? It's too heavy, it's too fast. You're gonna come underneath to pop it up, like so, and when you pop it up, it's gonna go boing and it's gonna catapult it. We don't want catapultion. It's not a word, it sounds good. Okay? It'll bird nest it. So now we're backed up. We gotta make an effort to come in. I can't roll cast in there because I'm gonna make a big splash. I can't overhand cast in there because I'm gonna make a big splash, get stuck in the cottonwood, look like a fool. I gotta come in there, call me Roland Martin. Get my gold chains on. Call me Roland Martin. You guys watch Roland Martin? That joke I think might have went past people. It's all right. Okay, thank you. That's good. <laughs> so what we got, guys, we come down. The rod is now six foot nine. I've taken seven inches off of it. Now it's easier to handle. Because I'm not having to lift the line up and dunk it in like I am with the flipping rod. So now I can come in under can cast. Pendulum it out, release it right when it starts to lift, keep it a foot off the water, and drop it in. Nice and subtle. We come to the next thing, we're back to that medium heavy. Because we need a little more give in that rod to make that cast work. Okay, but yet, when they do get a hold of it, we got some backbone there to hook them. Because we gotta drive that thing past the plastic or past the brush guard that's on the jig, whatever it may be. Okay, it's fast, which means we got good sensitivity once we rip it out there 20, 30 feet. Okay, 10 to 15 pound. Remember how I was told to 25 before? Okay, just backing down again. Right tool for the job. So important. Like I said, I don't want you guys to run out tomorrow, buy all these rods, because you're going to get home, and you're going to have divorce papers. It's going to be all bad but just find the right numbers that work. Okay, find the right numbers that work. It already happened to you. It's gonna happen to you, isn't it? I think it was divorce me. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Very lucky. Okay, guys. One last one, and we're gonna move on. Is anybody bored? Show of hands. Good, good. Okay, guys. This is a planer board rod. You guys see the drop or the uh, the uh, planer board commercial, right? Sick of seeing it, probably. A little orange board Psh, makes me a lot of money. Whew. All right, guys. Tool for the job. We're gonna get to this when we get to the steelhead aspect of it. But I want to show you this rod. And when I bring it in next time, it'll be all rigged, so you see visually what I'm talking about. Okay. What we got here? Planer board rod. When I let my little board out there, I need a rod that's going to allow it to work, surge and pull. Now this isn't a planter board rod for hooking up, sending it out on the big cedar boards. You can use a regular old salmon steelhead rod for that. This is made to have a planter board attached to it, be it one of the other models that we won't discuss because it's not what I sell. Okay? So let's look at it. Now this one here has got a little less info on it. Okay? A little less info on it. So it's quarter to three quarter ounce. Well, that planter board weighs a lot more than that. That's what's deceiving about these. You're not casting the planter board out there. You're letting the river current take it out or you're letting the boat take it out. That weight means nothing. You're not casting it. It's a deception thing, not important. Can you pick this rod up and flip with it if you wanted to? Sure you can, okay, sure you can. So then you'd want to look at that if you wanted a dual purpose rod, okay? So we got 779, seven foot nine inch, okay? That would be okay for doing flipping. Pitching, too long, okay? 
Medium power. Medium power. You're rarely going to find a rod that does this that's heavy powered. That's where the problem is using it as a flipping rod. Okay? If I give this to Chad, his goal is to break it on a hook set. And he will break it. Okay? If we're flipping. Because of this right here. Where that telescopes, that is weak. Not for planter board fishing, because it's just out there doing its thing, you hook up, you fight your fish. But for flat out, close combat, heavy line, doing one of these, what they do is they split right here. Okay? Now when you look at it, nothing on this says, it's just that I gotta find fast, I gotta find moderate, I gotta, it's not on here. Okay? Remember everything we said about this is where you do this in the store. Okay? See how this one's bending? See that? Tell me what that reminds you of. Can you guys go into the store and know what you're looking at now? By doing this? Okay? We're trolling, right? Okay? What are we doing? We're moving a bait fast through the water, right? What has to happen? You've got to use a rod that will allow the fish to suck the bait in. But yet, even though it's medium power, when you're trolling, guys, you'll rarely see a trolling hook set. Your hook set is done with whatever kicker motor you have. Fish on, okay? It's like the cranking rod. I've gone out and experimented with them, threw it out, the fish eats it, I just keep cranking. The hooks are buried. You're moving it away, he hits and turns. The momentum of the boat going forward drives him in. You try to set the hook with a planer board out there, all it's gonna do is jump around because it's going out like this and then back. Speed up the boat. Let the rod do the work, okay? So you guys kinda understand now, see how that works? Did you learn some stuff? Okay, let's move on.